speaking in tongues is speaking in agreement with God it is one of your superpowers because your superpower is to be able to speak in agreement with God and he is a superpower you have a superpower we're gonna talk about what it is how to use it yes. you all right with this say I have a superpower mark 11 23 for verily I say unto you that whosoever say whosoever, whosoever. now who, whosoever who's that apply to no. did he say whosoever is first a Christian and is filled with the Holy Ghost no, no I didn't say that it just said whosoever what I, we can assume that he's not talking to dogs and cats right. right he's talking to people whosoever is a person verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say so we have to be a person and we have to say something mm -hmm. are you getting this yes. is this too difficult so far no. no you have to be a person and you have to be saying something all right whosoever shall say unto this mountain and we all understand that that could just be a mountain of problems it could it could be a literal mountain it could be a mountain of debt have you ever heard of that yeah. a mountain of debt what are you gonna say to that well well be removed let's re read on here that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea well here's Jesus talking about a whosoever mm -hmm. then he's telling them to say something to an inanimate object mm -hmm. right yeah. whosoever shall say into this mountain and tells them uh, what to do tells the inanimate object what to do be thou removed be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart or his spirit man but say but but, but shall believe say shall believe. shall believe shall shall believe what shall believe that the things those things which he says yes. shall come to pass mm -hmm. so here we have the qualification we have a whosoever they have to be willing to say something and say something to this worldly world system or whatever's here right mm -hmm. and then they have to speak it and believe that what they say comes to pass so what are they believing they're believing the things they say come to pass That's right. they're not necessarily and people get tripped up on this all the time I can't believe the mountains gonna be moved I can't believe it's gonna be moved that's not what you're required to believe you're required to believe the things you say mm -hmm. come to pass mm -hmm. and we're like God in that capacity he made us that way right mm -hmm. God says things and believes they come to pass and they come to pass mm -hmm. say believe, believe the things I say comes to pass now remember this applies to you it applies to me it applies to unsaved people it applies to everyone this is not a superpower this is just a regular power this is just what we should all be doing you understand but the what, what we have here is people who learn how to do this saved or not saved seem like they have a superpower mm -hmm. but it's not a superpower it's a regular power yeah. are you seeing this yes. so that's not really what we're gonna be talking about today we're gonna be talking about your superpower your power as a person your power by design your power by right and privilege of being a person in this earth mm -hmm. your power is to be able to speak and believe those things you say come to pass yes. whether Christians like it or not it applies to Christians mm -hmm. I don't know why they don't like it they can just use it too right. say if I believe, if I believe what, I what I say comes to pass, comes to pass I'll, have I'll, have I'll have whatever I say that's your regular power it's everybody's power it's not special it's just it may look super special if somebody's actually using it because so many people don't or they don't even know about it mm -hmm. are you here yes. but it is how you're like God Hebrews chapter 11 says God framed the worlds by his word mm -hmm. right speaking and believing it came to pass we know that from Genesis chapter 1 he spoke and it was mm -hmm. and then he made Adam and Eve after his likeness first we went on this at quite length a little while back he made him in his image first because that's how God does things he imagined it first and then he spoke it forth mm -hmm. so God framed you that way he put you in this earth made out of words 
and even as a person saved or unsaved you can still speak words and believe they come to pass and have them come to pass that's not a superpower it may seem like a superpower to people who've never seen that happen before but it's not a superpower it's just what God wired into you but your superpower is this speaking in agreement with God See now first you got to understand and know who God is right mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and we walk with him by saying words your superpower is speaking in agreement with God yes. speaking it's still speaking right do you remember the Tower of Babel we talked about that a little bit what did they do what happened what what made them like God that we see the Bible talks about it's in Genesis chapter 11 it said they spoke in agreement with each other the superpower is speaking in agreement with God but even speaking in agreement with somebody else multiplies your power remember Jesus even said that he said if two of you agree say agree, agree. on earth as touching something they say or something they ask mm -hmm. how'd you touch it by saying yeah. say I touched it, I touched it. By, saying. by saying if two of you on earth agree as touching are you here <laughs> who's on earth we are. you me who else is on earth the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. so if I agree with him mm -hmm. on earth touching things that I say mm -hmm. I have a superpower are you seeing this yes. Your superpower is speaking in agreement with God. So first you got to know who God is. Well, the Holy Ghost, he's God in the earth today. We have whole other messages on that, you understand? Mm -hmm. If you need help with that, have I talked about that before? Yes. I talk about it, I'll probably talk more about it even today. But the point is, he is the living God in the earth, and we walk with him by saying words. So we walk with the Holy Ghost we know who is God in the earth today. say he's in the earth he's in the earth do we understand that yes. do we know how to walk with him yes. yes Amos chapter 3 and verse 3 says can two walk together except they be agreed the word agreed means say the same thing so if the Holy Ghost is God he's in the earth and you are in the earth and by the way you're not God if you're gonna walk with him you're going to have to be in agreement by saying the same thing That's right. you're the two walking together your superpower is to speak in agreement with God God who God the Holy Ghost are you here yes. so how do we do that wouldn't that be good to know because mm -hmm. if we're gonna walk in agreement with God first we need to know who he is but then we need to know what's going to be in agreement with him right mm -hmm. what if we had something where we know where we knew what he already said mm -hmm. would that be would that be good yeah. well if we knew that he had already said that if I can simply say that mm -hmm. I know I'm in agreement with that now I'm not just saying things which is a power which is a natural power I'm saying things that are in agreement with God the living God in the earth today that's a superpower are you getting this second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man right they didn't make it up but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost or you could say the will of the Holy Ghost yes. so we have all of these verses of Scripture that are his will your superpower is speaking in agreement with God well we know the Holy Ghost is the one who wrote these right mm -hmm. holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost is that what your Bible says yes these are the things the Holy Ghost said through men so if we speak these things we're in agreement with who the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Ghost where is he in he's in the earth if I'm speaking his scriptures I'm speaking in agreement with him what is that it's a superpower well if you go down this road a little ways you will see that I am what God said I am say that I am, I am. what God, God said I am said I who's God the Holy Ghost you are what God said you are I have what God said I have these are things that I'm gonna say and speak in agreement I can do what God said I can do mm -hmm. you still here yes. 
when I say those things that I am what God said I am I have what God said I have I can do what God said I can do what am I doing when I say those things I'm speaking in agreement with God the Holy Ghost who already said these things right. he's already said them now it's just my job to speak in agreement with them mm -hmm. it becomes a superpower second Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 says all of the promises of God the promises of who of God. God the Holy Ghost in him are yea meaning yes but I like to say yay I'm glad the King James said it that way you get a little excited about yay and in him amen meaning the so be it mm -hmm. he already said yes say he already said yes he already already said said yes. yes. our job is to say so be it mm -hmm. so be it unto me superpower Holy Ghost so I am and then according to Exodus chapter 3 verse 14 you don't have to look there but this is where God you know Moses was up with the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh said well who is this God and God said I am that I am mm -hmm. he's like that pretty much says it right well I am that promise I am mm -hmm. say I am, I am. That, that promise, promise. I, am. I am is there any power in that you've got the I am behind you are you here you're in agreement with him is he more powerful than you yes. yes when you're in agreement with him you know it's like say you got a small guy he comes into a room but he's got this big giant angel behind him mm -hmm. and everybody can see the angel are they gonna mess with the small guy in the room no, no because he's backing him up That's right. are you here yes. I am that I am I am what I am said I am we're talking about your superpower speaking in agreement with God mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1 here we see verse 8 but you shall receive what power, power. it's Jesus talking after he was raised from the dead right before he went up into heaven are you here yes. he said you shall receive power you could even put superpower there right yes. you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come on you yes. so are you the power or is he the power he he's the one with the power he comes on you right. do you understand mm -hmm. well and if we look at this a little bit closer we know that we're talking about our superpower you shall receive power or superpower after the Holy Ghost comes on you say after, after. what happened after what happened after the Holy Ghost came on them they began to speak as he gave them utterance well if I'm speaking as he gives me utterance what am I speaking I'm speaking in agreement with him he's giving me the utter I'm speaking as he gives me the utterance I'm speaking in agreement with God and God calls that power are you getting this yes. what's your superpower speaking in agreement with God yes you can speak in agreement with his word and it will come to pass what will come to pass if I speak a prosperity scripture prosperity, prosperity will come to pass supernaturally yes. say prosperity, prosperity will, come pass will come to pass supernaturally, supernaturally. if I'm speaking a prosperity scripture what if I speak a healing scripture healing will come to pass supernaturally it's my superpower what if I speak youth renewal over my physical body youth renewal will happen supernaturally it's my superpower I'm just speaking declaring in agreement with God the Holy Ghost who's in the earth are you here yes. but then it says we can take it one step further let's go to Acts chapter 2 right mm -hmm. remember Jesus said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes on you well let's see what happened after in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind it filled the house where they were sitting there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost Jesus said you'd receive power after the Holy Ghost comes on you mm -hmm. they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began say began yes. began to speak say began to speak. began to speak 
Jesus said this was power they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance as the Spirit gave would mean in agreement yes. speaking in tongues is speaking in agreement with God it is one of your superpowers because your superpower is to be able to speak in agreement with God mm -hmm. and he is a superpower so if he's giving you the words to say and you're speaking them out that's what happens when you're speaking in tongues he gives you an unction and you begin to speak them out and you get better at that you know that right mm -hmm. you get more defined at speaking in agreement with him I think the more developed your tongues get the more in agreement you are mm -hmm. right yes. the more defined things can become if I'm if I'm painting a picture say painting a picture, painting a picture. with my words and I just say couch everybody goes oh couch and everybody has a different image of a couch but if I say brown couch mm -hmm. if I say big brown fluffy couch oversized stuffed big brown lev leather couch right each time I say something I add a different word I get a more defined image of that right. and I'm speaking more in agreement with what I was thinking about mm -hmm. same thing with the Holy Ghost as you learn to speak in tongues more fluently and accurately you'll be able to say things more in agreement does that make sense yes. that was for somebody out there anyway did we see that in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 Jesus said you would receive power after the Holy Ghost comes on you mm -hmm. what came what happened after the Holy Ghost came on them they began to speak in agreement mm -hmm. so God is calling speaking in agreement power mm -hmm. I'm telling you it's your superpower now confession of the word I am what the word says I am is speaking in agreement with the known will of God when I'm speaking in tongues I don't know what those words are but I'm speaking agreement in agreement with the unknown mm -hmm. will of God mm -hmm. but the more I speak in other tongues the more I know about the unknown will of God because he reveals it to me the Bible calls it mysteries we're speaking mysteries well the object of speaking the mystery isn't to keep it a mystery the object of speaking those mysteries is to have that mystery revealed say revealed. revealed and when it's revealed or unveiled then we look at it we can see it yeah. it's no longer a mystery mm -hmm. I'm standing today in a place where a lot of things are no longer a mystery but I'll come up to some other people and they're still they have a veil over that it's still a mystery to them mm -hmm. things like the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words I've had those veils removed so I can stand in that some people are still behind that veil and can't see it yet we'll stick around we'll get you there well let's go to first Corinthians you still here mm -hmm. we're talking about speaking in tongues we know that we're speaking in agreement with God and we're speaking the unknown because no man understands him Howbeit in the spirit he speaks mystery first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God now remember what happened when they received the Spirit of God they began to speak as he gave them utterance. they began to speak in agreement with God in the unknown will of God mm -hmm. how much of the will of God do you think they could have possibly known on the day of Pentecost very little mm -hmm. we should know a lot more now verse 12 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God who would that be Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost that we might know that we might know that we might know so we're speaking in these other tongues that we might know yeah. we're speaking the unknown will of God in agreement with God that we might know is this making sense yes. we're not doing it for no reason just to wear your jaw out we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things mm -hmm. that are freely given to us of God they're already freely given to us but we don't know them yet because they're still a mystery until we speak them out is this making sense mm -hmm. verse 13 which things also we speak, speak we're speaking forth the things that God is trying to freely get over to us are you here yes. not in words that man's wisdom teaches but words the Holy Ghost teaches 
if I'm speaking the words that the Holy Ghost is teaching me what am I doing I'm speaking in agreement the unknown will and things of God not so that I can never know them but so I can know them so they can be revealed to me so I can walk in them and use them are you here yes. so if I speak in tongues more and more I should have more of the things of God revealed to me I should have more of the mysteries of God unveiled to me yes. you understand reveal and unveil they're sort of the same thing taking the veil away revealing mm -hmm. second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away say the veil, the veil. what happens when a veil is taken away you see things you didn't see before That's right. you can understand something that wasn't there before that you didn't understand before could it possibly be a shock to your system yes. oh my goodness I didn't know that was behind there mm -hmm. you remember the show let's make a deal oh, Do you remember that show yes. was it Mon Monty Hall I want to say that yeah. oh, let's make a deal you could pick what's behind one of the curtains you know and they'd, they'd I don't know trade money for it or something right and they could pick what was behind the curtain well when the curtain opened sometimes they were shocked there was a donkey behind the curtain I remember this one time they had a donkey behind it what are they gonna do with a donkey <laughs> other times it'd be a new car uh -huh. are you here yes. did they know what was behind that before the veil was taken away no, no that was the whole show so you should understand this mm -hmm. nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away so there are veils that are taken away that reveal things to you that you didn't know before mm -hmm. verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit can you imagine how shocked most Christians are when that veil is taken away right. they open it up and it says now the Lord is that spirit speaking in tongues removes veils for you you understand mm -hmm. it should lead to the knowledge of the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today it should lead to the knowledge that Jesus isn't here that Jesus left and is seated at the right hand of the Father and sent another mm -hmm. are you here yes. it should lead to the pure unadulterated fact that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today why because I'm praying out mysteries and I'm, I'm speaking these things that I don't know yet and it's removing a veil verse 17 the veil is removed now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is Liberty and now the Lord is open the curtain the Holy Ghost yes. and people are like what wait what you mean Jesus turned into the Holy Ghost no Jesus never turns into the Holy Ghost Jesus sat at the right hand of the Father and sent the Holy Ghost now the Lord in the earth is that spirit are you getting this yes. tongue speaking in tongues should ultimately lead to knowing the Holy Ghost as God first Corinthians chapter 3 and let's look at verse 16 know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you say I'm the temple of God, the, temple of God. the Spirit of God, Spirit of God dwells, in me. dwells in me who is that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. where are you you're on earth where is he he's on earth these revelations these unveilings these revealings of mysteries should bring you to the place of understanding and knowing that the Holy Ghost is God and that you are the temple of God mm -hmm. if you knew him as God you would worship him as God mm -hmm. you would say the words I worship you Holy Ghost say that I worship you Holy Ghost guess what you are right there when you do that you're a Holy Ghost worshiper but you are fulfilling your purpose as a temple of God the, the purpose of the temple of God is for the worship of the God that's in the temple that's right. know you not that you are the temple of God and that it's okay I'm the temple of God that's what it says I understand that I'm the temple of God that the Spirit of God dwells in you who's the Spirit of God the Holy Ghost who am I the temple of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and he's God mm -hmm. are we seeing this yes. what's the function of the temple what is the first function of the temple to worship 
god that's my point so speaking in tongues is something that the modern day temple should do when somebody receives the holy ghost the first thing they begin they begin yeah. they begin to do and that's the evidence of them receiving the holy ghost is they begin to speak in other tongues or speak in agreement with the holy ghost it is something that the modern day temple he came into the temple and they began to speak in agreement that's right. speaking in agreement with scriptures is also another thing that the modern day church should be doing yeah. the more scriptures we know the more we can speak in line with what god says that's right but one of the number one things we should be doing as a temple of god say i am, I am. A, temple a temple of god i should be worshiping god i should be worshiping god so if you are a temple of god you should say the words i worship you holy ghost it's simply a string of words that acknowledges that he is in the temple and you worship him using the words i worship you holy ghost is a confession of having that veil taken away i'm on the other side of that veil now because i say the words i worship you holy ghost and i know that he's god in the earth today i am his temple say i am his temple i, his temple. I worship you holy ghost you. saying the words i worship you holy ghost is a confession of having of having it removed are you here yes. remember we speak in agreement with god mm -hmm. the temple of god should be speaking in other tongues the temple of God should be speaking in agreement with the word the temple of God should certainly be saying the words I worship you Holy Ghost first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God you're not your own for you're bought with a price therefore glorify God who the Holy Ghost God in your body and in your spirit which are God's or which are his what is one thing that I could be doing to glorify God in my body or to lift up or to magnify God who's in my body worshiping him speaking in agreement with him but really what I'm trying to get you across here is that you should be using the words I worship you Holy Ghost you're glorifying magnifying him where that he's in your body you are his temple are you getting this yes. use of the words I worship you Holy Ghost not only is that glorifying God in your body which is his temple but it is the ultimate form of agreement because you're agreeing with him and his will and his revealed word that now he's in you you are his temple what's the number one thing a temple should do worship God the God that's in the temple mm -hmm. who's the God in the temple Holy Ghost and so when you say I worship you Holy Ghost you are speaking in agreement with his known will and his revealed will That's right. use of the words I worship you Holy Ghost is the ultimate agreement with God it opens up a world of benefits worshiping the Living God when you say I am the temple of God you've opened up a whole world of benefits with all the rights and privileges of being a temple of God is a temple of God poor no. what if you say you're poor mm -hmm. don't say that you're not speaking in agree so if you're the temple of God you've been opened up to all these benefits That's right. how about health is the temple of God healthy yes. I we, I can go up to you and say is the temple of God healthy you say well yes I am thank you <laughs> right is the temple of God wealthy what yes, yes I am yes I am thank you mm -hmm. are you here yes. is the temple of God's youth renewed oh yes oh yes yeah. it's opened up a whole enormous room of benefits what room the room of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. how about all things working together for good for you oh yeah it's a superpower worshiping the Holy Ghost using the words I worship you Holy Ghost is a super superpower literally calls for the new manifestation of the Spirit and the powers of the world to come and it fully fully, fully rewires you into this dispensation the reason a lot of people aren't fully rewired into this dispensation is because they haven't used the words I worship you Holy Ghost and acknowledged him as God and began to worship him right. and when you do it opens up all these begins to rewire you mm -hmm. fully completely into this dispensation yes. I am transformed into a living temple of a living God in the earth mm -hmm. 
when I speak those words when I speak the words I worship you Holy Ghost I'm speaking in agreement with him I'm speaking in agreement with his will with his plan with his purpose for you mm -hmm. my spiritual dad Kenneth E Hagan he used to say this all the time he used to say it over and over and over and over again we must become God inside minded well if I'm God inside minded who am I minded of who's the God inside the Holy Ghost is the God inside we have to become God inside minded we have to be thinking this way we have to have our mind renewed to the fact mm -hmm. John 14 verse 16 and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter is that Jesus Jesus was saying it he's gonna give you another I will give you another comforter that he say he, he. he. means he's a person mm -hmm. he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not neither knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you you know him for he so to know him you have to have a revelation of it do you understand we know him for he dwells with you where do you dwell by the way what planet is it earth he dwells with it wasn't a, you know a trick question he dwells with you on the earth are you here yes. and shall be say shall be, shall be shall be in you we need to become more God inside minded now what's your superpower remember how I began this by saying that everybody has the power of being able to say words and believe they come to pass yes. and have what they say then I went on to say that our superpower goes beyond that power is to be able to speak in a grit still speaking mm -hmm. but to speak in agreement with God because he's God yes. he's gonna dwell with us and shall be in us we become the temple of God and I've showed you many things of how we're supposed to walk and speak and talk temple the temple of God talks say the temple of God talks, the temple of God talks. we know he talks by speaking in tongues because that's when the when the Holy Ghost moved in you began speaking in tongues in agreement with him yeah. and we know as a temple we should be worshiping the God that's in the temple using the words I worship you Holy Ghost all of which are superpowers first John chapter 4 verse 4 you are of God little children and have overcome now overcoming means you have a power that's greater than the thing you overcame yes. although otherwise I would have said you are of God little children and have been overcome mm -hmm. it didn't say that it says you are of God little children and have overcome which means you have a power that's greater than them yes. you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you yes. who's the he that is in you the Holy, the Holy Ghost greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so it doesn't matter what's in the world the he that is in you is greater and speaking in agreement with him causes you to have a power that's super or above the power that's going on in the natural that's right. your superpower is speaking in agreement with him mm -hmm. him who the god that's in you who's the god that's in you holy ghost greater say greater, greater. The Holy Ghost he is a superpower mm -hmm. he has more power than anybody else mm -hmm. right yes. he is a person and has power but I'm just gonna say he's a superpower mm -hmm. agreement with him is ours mm -hmm. what's your superpower agreement with him mm -hmm. our superpower is being 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 the temple of God the temple of God speaks in agreement with God the temple of God says I am what God says I am the temple of God is there to worship and magnify the Living God who is the Holy Ghost That's right. and therefore we use the words I worship you Holy Ghost mm -hmm. speaking in agreement I am what he says I am speaking in tongues which is speaking the unknown things which should lead you to know him as God and then speaking the words I worship you Holy Ghost is the completion of of your job as a temple of God because you're worshiping him 
all of these things are your are your superpower let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you for these people that they've heard this word today and I ask you to help them to open their mouth that they may speak forth words in other tongues that they may speak forth in agreement Holy saying Ghost I am God what I am says I am and that they may use the words I worship you Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost and fulfill God their purpose in the earth as being a temple of the living God Holy Ghost, God.